Hi, my name is Todd. Hi. How do you do? Good. So, Maria, uh, looks like the doctor's ordered a MUGA scan for you. Have you ever had a MUGA scan before? No. Okay, so what are what's going on that the doctor would order this? Um, well, I was going to start chemotherapy pretty soon. Chemotherapy, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so how soon are you going to start that? Um, today is... Uh, Tuesday, probably by uh, next Tuesday or the Tuesday afternoon. Okay. So what the doctor is wanting to do is get an assessment, uh, like a baseline of how your heart is doing. Now, probably throughout your chemotherapy program, they're going to be having you come back uh, every month or a couple months to have your heart checked again to make sure that your heart is still staying strong, strong enough for the chemotherapy that we're not doing, or they're not going to be doing too much damage to it with the, the chemicals that they're giving you. So this is probably just going to be a baseline exam, and they're going to you know, compare future uh, MUGA tests and, and your readings from your heart to what we're doing today. Okay, may I go ahead and take a look at your wristband, please? And kindly tell me your full name and your birth date. Maria Rodell, uh -huh. um, 1025-17. All right, thank you very much, and that's exactly what I have here. Okay, so what uh, we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start an IV, okay? And we're going to give you an injection of um, a chemical called uh, pyrophosphate, or PYP. It's not going to do anything to you. You're not going to feel anything with it. But what it's going to do is it's going to prepare your red blood cells for the uh, imaging agent that we'll inject in about a half hour after that. Okay, think of it as like, like primer. Okay, when you're painting something, put down some primer so the paint will really stick to the surface. Well, this PYP is going to act like that for your red blood cells. We'll inject it. We'll let it circulate for about uh, 20 minutes to a half hour. And then we'll give you an injection, another injection through that same IV of a slightly radioactive tracer. It's a very low energy. It's not going to do anything to you. You're not going to feel anything. But it's going to give enough energy off that the camera will be able to trace the blood flow through your heart, or especially the, the left ventricle. That's what the doctor is really wanting to check out, what they call the ejection fraction. He'll also want to see uh, the volume and, and other such uh, characteristics about that left ventricle and the muscle and the movement of the muscle. So they're wanting to gauge and, and take a look at all of that. But the ejection fraction is really the key indicator to uh, how well your heart is uh, working. So that imaging agent will inject, will circulate your bloodstream, it'll attach itself to the cells that have had that primer or been prepared for, the, uh, for this, this uh, test. And uh, that way, as they flow through your uh, circulatory system, especially that left ventricle, we'll be able to, to gauge uh, just how well your heart is pumping, okay? Um, after that, we can take the IV out. You won't need any further injections, which is we'll give you one poke and two injections into that IV. When we get you on the table, after it's circulated in your body for about 10 minutes, that second agent, uh, we'll connect three electrodes to you, one on each collarbone and one and down on uh, your side here, actually on the other side, and uh, that's gonna gauge uh, or gate your heart beat and it'll be able to divide the picture up according to each uh, phase of your heartbeat. And that way they can look at your heart in kind of like a still motion there. It'll just show one phase, one phase, one phase over and over again. And that way they can see it without it being a whole blur. They, that way they can calculate your diastolic and, and uh, systolic uh, readings of your heart and then use the calculations to get your ejection fraction. Okay, uh, the, the imaging software will do all that. We won't be able to really see anything while we're acquiring the images. But uh, we'll get you on the table. Um, the protocol, a lot of hospitals do uh, three different uh, views. They'll take a, a left anterior oblique view, just sort of a, um, a diagonal view, okay? And it's actually been on your left side. And so that's what the, that's the image that's gonna give the reading, to be able to ca give the calculations about your ejection fraction. And then we'll do an anterior picture, for a few minutes and then a lateral just from the side. Um, that way the doctor will have several views of your heart. So you're work, looking at about 10 minutes per view, okay? So about 30 minutes of imaging. Do you feel comfortable about laying down for about 30 minutes? Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, if it's an issue we, between different views, we can let you get up and, and stretch your legs. We'll, we'll work with you to try to keep you comfortable, okay? And so about 30 minutes of imaging, you'll have three wires on there. We'll change the, the views as necessary. 
get you comfortable. You can even go to sleep if you like. We'll try to keep it nice and quiet and comfortable for you. Um, there's no side effects to this. Uh, the only thing I really want to know is, is uh, when's the last time you had anything to eat? Uh, earlier in the day, like uh, about five hours ago. Five hours ago? Okay, that's fine. And when's the last time you had any caffeine? Uh, I usually do. Well, I don't drink coffee. Okay, so you haven't had any caffeine in the past six to twelve hours? Uh, I had a soda last night. Okay, that's not going to be a problem right there. Uh, we just want to make sure we're getting a, an accurate, normal day study of what your heart is doing. And so, you know, we'll go ahead and get the IV started and uh, give you that first injection. Like I said, we'll let you sit and rest for about 20 minutes to a half hour. Give you the second injection, about another 10 minutes and then uh, of circulation, and then we'll get you on the table in about 30 minutes. After that, you're free to go. There's no restrictions on you. You can do anything you like, eat what you like. It's, it's not going to be a, uh, an issue with this exam or the, or the injections we're giving you. Do you have any questions? Um, will the radioactivity interfere with the chemotherapy that I'll be getting? That's a good question. No, it's, uh, it's won't. It's a technesium-based uh, uh, radiopharmaceutical. Technesium has a very short half-life. Tech-99M is what it's called. It has a very short half-life. It'll wash out of your body before it's even fully decayed. It's not gonna, and like I said, it has a very low energy. It's not gonna do anything to you. And so it's not gonna interfere with the chemotherapy or if you're even having radiotherapy as well, it's not gonna inter interfere with that as well. Um, there's really uh, very few restrictions as far as you know, anywhere you can go or you know do. You can have your family around you. It's not a problem. Um, so yeah, there's no concerns about that. I know a lot of people are worried about radiation. But I'll be in here in the room the whole time you're having your test, okay? It's not like a CT where they have to run off behind the, the glass into some other room. I could be here with you. That's how safe it is. And uh, do you have any other questions I could, I could answer for you? Okay. Now, according to your age, you do fall within our criteria of pregnancy. I do have to ask you, when's the last time, or excuse me, are you, is there any chance you could be pregnant or breastfeeding? Okay. May I ask when your last menstrual cycle was or ended? Okay, that's perfect. And it looks like there's nothing else uh, you know, left to do. I do have the doctor's order right here. I've already verified that it is uh, accurate for what he wants to study for. So let's go ahead and get the show on the road, okay? All right. All right.